Hey everybody, so now we're going to be digging into this um, article over from Wargaming, which talks about uh, Ryan Dancy discussing how Wizards picked the wrong Creative Commons license for D&D. Somehow I missed this one. I think this was probably from the... I haven't read this yet, so I don't know what this is pulling from, but it's. I'm assuming it's from the uh, Roll for Combat interview he did a couple weeks back. Maybe that was a week ago. Stop it, Smeagol. My cat is being ridiculously naughty this morning. Come here, get back up on the bed. I may have to put you outside. Um, anyway, uh, if you like this kind of stuff, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Um, this is a part of the live stream that we do every Sunday morning called This Week in Tabletop RPGs. Um, we do these live at uh, 8 a.m. every week, and then we talk about various things. So let's go through this. It says, um, dun, 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 dun. I'm scrolling down here. Ryan Dancy, former D&D brand manager and one of the architects of the original OGL, has criticized Wizards of the Coast for, in his view, using the wrong CC license. Interesting. Smeagol, you're just not going to let it go, are you? Um, Wizards released everything under the CC 4.0 international license. And according to Dancy, this is an issue because CC BY does not require you to give the same rights to your derivative works to the public that you receive from the upstream contributors of the work you're using to make those derivative works. I don't know what that means. Does he give it better clarification? Okay. They do give a better clarification, thankfully, because people like me might need some time to process what that means. It says, put it less confusingly, whereas the OGL requires derivative works to use the same license and keep their tabletop RPG content open. This isn't required under CC BY 4.0. It says someone could take D&D's rules, make new content from it, and then close that content off with a new, more restrictive license says here, he, he says, would wizards intend to let someone take the rules of D&D, make a derivative work from it that might be possibly better, close that work, and then fork the commons? I say no, they would not. They just used the wrong license. It says here, if correct, this wouldn't just be an issue that impacts Wizards of the Coast. It might, might change the entire open ecosystem that's developed around 5e and the OGL. Uh, Dancy reckons the right copyleft license a couple of us to use would have been CC by SA, the crucial SA for share alike, meaning all content published under this way has to use the same license as the original. While he thinks Wizards used the wrong license, it seems he believes the mistake won't have any dramatic impact. He says it's unlikely there will be much use, if any, of the CC by fork, suggesting that, con that creators will continue to publish their work under the OGL just as they did before. Um, I think that assumes a lot. I think that assumes that people aren't going to be terrified of hey Smeagol I gotta show you guys this this is hilarious so we keep the um, we keep the bag big bag of food in here and he's going to town in that big bag of food so I have got to put him out he's being a little obnoxious booger one second come here Cats. Love them to death, but sometimes. All right. Uh, what was I saying? OGL. Um, I don't know. So here's the problem. I think if you read, there's. A, let's go back to the um, interview here. Um, oh, I think it was the previous uh, um, War Gamer piece here. Okay. There's a section here at the bottom of this other. Um, piece by Wargamer, where, um, is it this one? This might not be the one. Somewhere in, in I think, the, the Halflings interview, there's a section where uh, Kyle Brink was saying that, you know, the OGL as it stands now, he says, they're not going to mess with it anymore, and the only thing you're going to be doing is potentially adding language to the SRD to um, the Creative Commons SRD to like um, update races to peoples and stuff like that. The question that I have, and I think a lot of people have, is can you trust Wizards of the Coast to not try to come back around again 
and touch the OGL 1.0 or 1.0A because they've shown that they're, they were willing to attempt that and they might attempt that again in the future. They are, they are saying right now that they wouldn't do that in the future, but I don't think anyone trusts him at this point. So when he suggests, when Dancy suggests that creators will continue to publish their work under the OGL just as they did before, I don't know. The CC BY thing, it's interesting because if you look at like what's going on with Broken Weave right now, um, they're blending the 5.1 SRD with their upcoming and unique, I think they call it C7D20 system. And what Dancy is suggesting here is that they could then decide to take that and take that blending and just close it off with their own fork and say, this is our unique system. That's the C7 D20 system blended with the 5.1 SRD. That's our unique system. We're now closing it off and it's a separate fork of that um, Creative Commons license. I, I mean, I don't know that anyone would be, be, I don't know that anyone would do that. I'll be very curious to see if anyone has the balls to actually come out and publish anything new under the OGL moving forward. Um, even, you know, Wizards having said, yeah, yeah, sorry, we're not going to do anything with it. We're not going to touch it. We promise. You know, there's no legal paperwork that says that they can't just turn around and try to do that again. And everybody's like, yeah, the SRD 5.1 is out in Creative Commons now. It is. And that means that I can make fifth edition compatible products now without even needing to reference the OGL. So why would I reference the OGL? Like, and I am an independent creator with everything we have going on with, with the Weave of the Void. Um, at this point, I'm still waiting to see what's going to come out of the ORC alliance with um, Paizo. But the question I have is, why would I ever consider doing anything with the OGL ever again when the 5th edition stuff is out there and I could just do what Cubicle 7 has done and I could take our Weave in the Void and blend my homebrew, which is what I wanted to do originally. This is an interesting thing because what I wanted to do originally was use my homebrew system, which is based on... Uh, second edition revised AD and D right before third edition, right? Like all those books that came out in like the early nineties, that's the edition that I like the most. That's, that's the edition that was in my formative years of learning how to play D and D. I learned on first moved into second and then everything that I DM'd was starting with that. But I used a hybrid system. I threw out a bunch of the rules that were in those books and just did my own thing. And I was originally going to do that when we were making our products for sale. And then I started looking at the legalities and potential lawsuits and all this other stuff. And I said, you know what? I don't want to deal with any of that. I might as well just use the OGL so that I don't have to deal with any legal headaches. It's an open thing. Everyone's using it. Ouroboros, the Middle Earth stuff. Everybody's using the OGL, Pathfinder, so on and so forth. So I said, it, it looks like it's pretty safe to use. And coming back around to that, it looks like I could theoretically go back and do what I originally had planned to do, which is have my own unique system that is blended with the 5.1 SRD and just make my own fork and say, this is my system. That's a blended system that has my homebrew blended with 5th edition, and here's how you can use my system with fifth edition i believe gm dave is also doing something like that right now he's 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 just launched this new um world uh and he's coming out with three little source books like one is the source book the other one is how to adapt um monsters from fifth edition to his setting um, and the other one has something else to do with how to adapt different things from fifth edition to his world and if you look at cubicle seven's uh broken weave project they talk about how, like, there's sections in there. Welcome to the channel, Tony Hacker. Um, there's a section in there where they talk about how um, it's not just about this new world. It's also about how to adapt. Like, they have a section there, how to adapt monsters and how to adapt things over to their system from 5th edition because it's a blended thing. It's a weird scenario. So the thing is, though, I haven't seen um, Broken Weaves source book because it's in a it's in a kickstarter phase right now so we i have no idea if it's going to be published under the ogl or not um 
remains to be seen. But I don't know. It's an interesting take on things. I hadn't read this from Ryan Dancy yet, so read through it at your leisure. I'm going to drop a link down below into the um, uploaded video portion of this for those of you who want to read more, so do that at your leisure. If you're watching this during the live stream, stick around because we're going to keep continuing onwards. But if you're watching this in the episodic format when I've pulled this out and published it later on in the week, this is the point of the video where I say, don't forget every Sunday at 8 a.m. Central Time we do this week in TTRPG, so if you can come tune in live, that's awesome. If you like what you saw here today, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon so you never miss an update or live stream. And don't forget to support all the ways you can with super chats, super thanks, stickers, memberships, the Patreon page where you can get a copy of our source book and the first module. Chris is working on art right now for the next module. I'm in the middle of doing map tutorials on Incarnate here on my YouTube channel and then getting into the map production for that. So we got another about 30 maps we got to create. We're going to be live streaming all those. So hopefully you'll check out all that stuff. And we'll see everybody in the next episode. Until then, stay safe, everybody. Happy gaming.